In previous videos, we've looked at how sampling distributions behave with regards to their mean and standard deviation. We found that the mean of a sampling distribution is always going to be equal to mu, the mean of the population. So this is fantastic because it means that when we take a sample and get a sample mean, we're just as likely to get a sample mean that is larger than mu as, as we are to get one that is less than mu. So we're just as likely to overestimate as to underestimate. It means that our estimator, x bar, can be considered unbiased. The other thing we found out is that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is equal to sigma divided by square root of n, where sigma is that population standard deviation. Now we're going to take a look at the third component, which is the shape. So we're going to look at the same histograms and things that we did before with those simulated sampling distributions, but this time instead of focusing on the mean and the standard deviation, we're going to focus on the shape of the sampling distribution. So if you recall from the previous video, we started by looking at a normal population. So this is the population. These are individuals that are represented in this histogram. The mean of all those individuals in the population was 5. Standard deviation was 1. We started by taking samples of size 5, and we looked at the means from samples of size 5, and we got our simulated sampling distribution that looked like this. So notice the shape of the population was normally distributed, and when we took samples of size 5, the shape of our sampling distribution is also roughly normally distributed. When we took samples of size 10, you can see that we still have normal distribution going on, and samples of size 30, then we're still getting a normal distribution. So when we start with a normal distribution as our population, then the distribution of values of x bar will be normally distributed regardless of the sample size. So that's pretty cool. So if we start with a normally distributed population, then we're going to end up with a normally distributed sampling distribution. But what happens when we don't start with a normal distribution? So when we start with, say, a uniform population. So this population clearly not normally distributed. It's kind of rectangle shaped. But what happens to the sampling distribution? Well, when I have a sample of size 5, well, you know, it's still a little bit flat, but it's looking a little bit less like a rectangle and a little bit more like a bell shape. When I get samples of size 10, now it's starting to look pretty bell shaped, fairly normal-ish. And definitely by the time I get a sample size of 30, I mean, that's gorgeous. It's like almost textbook looking normal distribution there. So that's when we start with a uniform distribution, but uniform distributions are at least symmetric. What happens when we start with a really ugly distribution, like the exponential distribution? So here is our population that was exponentially distributed, so really skewed, really lots of outliers, really ugly. When we had a sample of size 5, Here's the sampling distribution. You can see that the shape of this sampling distribution is still skewed to the right. When we took samples of size 10, then still skewed to the right, but a little bit less skewed. And when we get to samples of size 30, now we're not seeing very much skew anymore. Instead, we're starting to see a normal distribution. So basically, no matter what shape our population is, if our sample size is big enough, the shape of the sampling distribution will be approximately normal. So this result is known as the central limit theorem. Draw a simple random sample of any size n from any population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, and when n is large, the sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar is approximately normal. So this is fantastic. This is great news for all of us because in order to answer probability questions about x bar, we're going to need to use the sampling distribution. And remember, probability is area under the curve. So we have to be able to find the area underneath the sampling distribution. And unless any of you are calculus geniuses out there, then we're going to have a really hard time finding areas under a lot of these curves. But what this limit, uh, central limit theorem tells us is that it doesn't matter. As long as we know how to find areas under normal distributions and our sample size is large enough, then we're going to be covered. 